And this is a Times Now super exclusive viewers. It's confirmed now our forces did not cede an inch of land to China. Times Now gets you the chronicles of courage of Indian soldiers who thwarted China's twin expansionist plans on 9th December. We are the only channel which will reveal blow by blow, bit by bit, details of how our braves gave the People Liberation Army, Army a bloody nose at Tawan. Top army sources at the border have told Times Now how the Chinese were not just bashed black and blue, but were also chased and some of them even captured. Yes, some of them were captured by our soldiers. Defeated and pushed back, we reveal to you how a desperate Chinese army fired in the air while they were restrained by our braves. This is the story that has not been told so far. Retreating PLA fired in the air in frustration. Let's go over this inside track that we have for you viewers. Here it is, point number one. India tracked PLA troops and vehicles to the build-up in December. We were not caught napping. This is India of 2022, not 1962. India forewarned and had reinforcements ready. At the line of actual control, the Chinese failed to get past Indian deployment, which is why they were rattled after pelting stones. The Chinese forces were thrashed and trounced. Some of them were even captured after they were bashed black and blue. Let's open this up quickly. Srinjoy Chaudhary joining us, editor-in-chief Rahul Shivshavkar, also on the broadcast. Rahul, this is in the India of 1962. Well, uh, details that have been uh, supplied to us now through our sources via Srinjoy Chaudhary, our national affairs editor, seem to suggest that this time India was fully aware of Chinese designs and uh, was extremely vigilant. And even though there was an attempt by the Chinese to transgress, like they were trying to, of course, do in Galwan, we caught them out, we stole them, and we gave it back to them in a manner that they will remember for a while. Now, let me, let me weave in Srinjoy into this conversation. Srinjoy, of course, uh, there are a number of individuals who are coming out with uh, different versions of what really transpired, but uh, these versions are differing only because certain uh, top army commanders are getting their information from their own individual sources. But viewers, after having spoken to individuals very close to the action on the ground, we have been able to piece together this very comprehensive picture, this chronicle of courage, so to speak. And what we can tell you is that there were two very significant things that happened. Number one, that the Indian forces harried the Chinese to such an extent that they became extremely frustrated. And at one time, even tried to fire in the air now whether the firing actually took place or whether there was an attempt to try and warn indian soldiers off i can't tell you exactly but fundamentally viewers what we do know is that the chinese were completely taken aback by this push and this push came back or this pushback came on the back of extreme preparedness. So we had been tracking Chinese movements in this particular area for a while now and therefore we knew exactly what the Chinese were going to do and where they were going to do. So any question of them trying to transgress and occupy like they did a few years, years ago, land in Doklam uh, and other spaces was not going to happen this time. The Indian forces were prepared. They had uh, done their reconnaissance missions. They had been observing Chinese positions and they retaliated in kind. More importantly, viewers, and this is really fundamental to the entire conversation we are having, what we also now realize is that the Chinese were angling for some kind of fight with the Indians and they had been amassing troops on their side of the LAC or what is the perceived LAC for a while now. Why was this the case? Was this the case because China has been shaken and she's iron grip on the country is loosening? Is it because the Chinese economy is tanking and people are feeling the hardship 
and therefore a distraction was in order was it because india has now uh, gone ahead and acquired the g20 presidency and this status upgrade for india in the wider community of leading nations is upsetting china and they want to derail the indian growth story by embroiling india in some sort of border fracas where we will end up obviously putting more and more resources which would be required for our development into trying to buffer not just the border region but also bolster our preparedness by investing in resources and this is what we have been doing significantly over the last 8 9 years viewers we have been on a very aggressive build up of our facilities military facilities at the border so as to try and anticipate any advances by the chinese so uh, pranesh this is the larger picture the indian army the indian forces all the wings today are very aware of what they need to do to actually thwart any chinese advance they are on top of the game their intelligence down to their dissemination of um, uh, or, and deployment rather and dissemination of information through the ranks is top notch and uh, fundamentally the chinese have come away feeling extremely shocked in fact there's news breaking where the chinese mouthpiece has begun to quote top military leaders in china to suggest that the indian forces need to actually control themselves now what does this mean what does this mean fundamentally that they have been rattled by india's belligerence this new found belligerence this new found aggression this new found freedom confidence to hit back has rattled the chinese and they are saying well india must manage its frontline troops better quoting top military officials in the chinese pla clearly viewers india decided and there is talk of this that india might have even crossed the lac and gone across to ensure that they were literally pushing back the chinese further than the chinese had anticipated before obviously crossing back to our own side which is something that india may not have done in the past but there is clearly after galwan and because india has galvanized its economy and recovered from covid so very quickly there is a new found confidence not just in the political establishment but this is trickled down to our military establishment to the point where the military feels that even if they push back leading to a minor escalation india's economy will be able to absorb any such short term shock so um, that really is what is uh, transpiring here that is the reason why the chinese are rattled that is why they could pushed back that is why their attempt to transgress the lac completely flopped so pranesh that's really the context thank you rahul uh, for putting this in context to our viewers uh, this is a comprehensive information put together on times so, so let me tell on, you I, yeah. if i may let me tell you so a large number of people of course are beginning to question uh, our preparedness once again now this would be rather unfortunate I, i can i can easily empathize with the opposition when it says that look we can do a lot more to escalate costs on china so that they don't even dream of undertaking such a move again i can understand that that you want to impose costs on china in a manner that they don't feel emboldened a second time to attempt something like this but to suggest right now in nitpick really on operational details and suggest that once again we were caught flat footed that the uh, uh, that the executive that the government at the center was perhaps not once again on the ball would be i think taking things a little too far we can have that larger debate on what else india can do from here on to ensure that china remains extremely committed to the agreements that have been signed with india in the past that conversation we can have and quite clearly many people will have different views on how india should approach china going into the future and what more perhaps costs can be imposed on china on beijing specifically the leadership mr xi etc to try and impress upon them that any misadventure with india is going to prove costly now that is a conversation we can have but to nitpick about india's preparedness this time which was obviously obviously extremely 
extremely well taken care of would be, I think, uh, displaying a certain bias. Handing back to you, Pranesh. Thank you, Rahul. We can have that debate for sure, but uh, let's also not forget that let's give the credit when it's due. And let's open this up uh, to our guest joining us, Lieutenant General S.K. Dua, former Chief of Integrated Defence Staff, Major General Dhruv Katoj, Director India Foundation, and Ambassador Stopdan also joining us. General Dua, I began by saying that we are no longer the India of 1962. Here our forces were ready, waiting to strike. China provoked. Raksha Mantri has said that there was an attempt to alter the status quo and we hit back. Uh, you are right, Pranesh. You know, whenever we talk of a skirmish, uh, uh, not a skirmish, uh, uh, you know, pushing and shoving that goes on at the LAC, uh, we, everyone tries to talk. I mean, somehow our mind goes back to 1962 and we were not prepared. Two, two years ago, when some things happened, in, incidents happened in Ladakh, Indian Army showed how well prepared it was. It was unfortunate that at Galwan they came with a huge strength, but there were casualties on both sides. There were several other flashpoints in Ladakh. Now, uh, but coming, coming to this incident, which took place three or four days ago, uh, in this incident, uh, firstly, there are Whenever a border is not fully resolved, when there is a, there are differing perceptions of line of actual control, there are bound to be such face-offs which sometimes go beyond just face-offs and gets into fisticuffs and all that once we finish our normal drills of trying to save the situation. But in this case, as the Raksha Mantri said today in the parliament, a strength of 300 came in. Now, you know, if it's approximately 300, it is not a patrol. A patrol would be anything between a section of 10 to 20 to 25 men. One, one could understand that it could be a patrol. But it's a large strength. And as, as Raksha Mantri has said, they were perhaps trying to thwart, they were trying to uh, address a particular post held by India, by Indian soldiers. And that that is where our preparedness came in handy. That attempt was thwarted without escalating the issue. After all, the soldiers would have uh, had good intelligence, would have been watching their uh, uh, advance, would have stopped them at the appropriate places, and all that without firing a shot. And um, the good part is we have also not incurred any fatal casualties. True, a few soldiers have been wounded, uh, would, would have been hurt, injured, they are receiving treatment, but no one has been, um, uh, th there have been no fatal casualties. And the last point I would say, this today is not, we, we have to understand that our preparedness of the Indian soldier is at its highest level. True, there is always want for more. You want more modern equipment, you want more better uh, logistic support, etc. But today, the Indian soldier is well prepared to thwart any evil designs at the LAC for whatever be the reason. We not just push them back. General Katoch, I want you to come in. Top sources have also told Times now that there was a situation we also captured PLA troops and then they were let off. Um, uh, yes, I think, you know, um, what General Dua has said, I totally second that. In this particular incident, uh, in this particular instant, the PLA has certainly got the worst of it, and I don't think they were expecting it. You see, they came in force. They were hoping to occupy some uh, some place which was not really occupied. So any of the unoccupied features near the line, they, would, they wanted to occupy it, and then hold on to it with the strength which they had. I think that was the aim. The aim was not really to, uh, you know, uh, remove any Indian post which, which, which we're already holding. That would have been suicidal for them. So um, their aim was restricted to occupy unoccupied territory and their patrol was witnessed. We saw them coming and our troops reacted. So I think in this particular, uh, particular face-off, the Chinese have learned a lesson. In my personal view, uh, these sort of incidences have taken place um, earlier also, but they used to be small patrols. Uh, they would come up to a certain point, our patrols would go, both of them would meet and then both of them would disengage. This has been going on for quite some time. But here the intentions were different. And I think this is where the importance lies. The intentions were different. They have got the worst of it. And I hope they have learned their lesson because this time no firing took place. 
but nobody can guarantee what can happen in a heated situation. While people may not, uh, uh, you know, you haven't fired this time, you didn't fire earlier, but at some point of time, it could really break out into firing and um, the, the, the LAC will heat up. So people need to be very careful. I think the Chinese must be told in clear categorical terms, you cannot do this. A patrol is different from trying to physically alter the character of the LAC as it exists today. And uh, the, we, yes, we did take prisoners. We have, we have sent them back. That simply shows the level of demoralization as far as the PLA troops are concerned. I have always considered that they are very raw troops. They are kept there for some time. They may have one or two uh, experienced soldiers, but by and large, they are raw troops. Um, we, I can call them kids. They're about 18 to 20 years old. They have very limited experience. And operating in these very difficult uh, conditions is not easy even for trained soldiers. Uh, I, have, I have served in these areas. I know what I'm talking about. Right. It is a very, very difficult area. So I think the Indian Army has performed creditably. More importantly, I think it is important for the political leadership at all levels of all parties, you know, not to rake up these issues uh, in a manner which become very derogatory for the armed forces uh, in trying to question our capacity and capability to defend the country. Uh, we will def the, the army there is very capable, very competent, and they will do what has to be done to preserve the integrity of the Indian well state. said, sir. Well said. Uh, Ambassador, stop down. Let's talk about the Chinese propaganda. Are you surprised by the kind of commentary? First, you know, they played down the incident, said nothing happened. Then they said India transgressed. Yeah, I saw that statement from the Western Threatened Command spokesperson. Uh, it's a usual stuff. I mean, every time they say the same thing, uh, they put the honors on India. But I believe, I, I, I agree with most of the comments made by General Savs and uh, Rahul also, that uh, after the Eastern Ladakh event, uh, Indian Army would have been very, very alert in this sector as well. So that is very, very important that uh, today Indian Armed Forces are very alert all over these sectors, I mean, Eastern, Middle and uh, this thing. But let's not stop at uh, praising the Indian Army. That's uh, nobody questions about uh, Indian Army's capability. It could be tactical, tactical uh, to raise the Tawang uh, sector and then do something in, else in Ladakh. And I do get report from Eastern Ladakh that uh, things are very bad there as well. So one doesn't know. But you know, normally this kind of a things happened uh, all along the LAC. I, I come from Ladakh. I mean, I keep hearing such things. Uh, it's not that Indian Army, uh, Chinese Army come in, but Indian Army also goes the, on the other side for tactical reasons. If I am the commander in, in Tawang, then I would have certainly gone inside the Chinese territory uh, because uh, the Chinese are not leaving Depsang. Uh, Chinese are not even willing to discuss Depsang and Demchok. Why I wouldn't do this? I would look for some kind of an excuse uh, to, to teach the Chinese a lesson and gain some leverage somewhere else. I mean, that's very military. Uh, if I have some military commander, will certainly do that. Uh, so therefore, don't underestimate our uh, um, army also. Absolutely. Don't After underestimate all, uh, the valor of our forces and don't undermine... Yeah. After their all, spirit. That's yeah, the message, all, I think, you know, coming out, uh, you know, all three of you have uh, spoken brilliantly. Uh, General S.K. Dua, Major General Dhruv Katoch and Ambassador Stopdan, thank you for speaking to us, sir. And thank you for once again underlining the spirit and the grit shown by our Javans. Let's understand through this map what actually happened in Tawang. This was the site of clash. Here it is. On, on, at two places, very close to the Yangtze River, the site of clash marked out in red. The patrolling teams first came. It was a smaller team of 2030. The plateau, as you know, is located at an altitude of 14,000 feet. This is the place where China was thwarted. The, the, this, is, this area is covered in thick snow because of the weather the PLA expected thin army presence but no our soldiers were ready we had information 
that there would be some provocation. In 2008, the PLA had broken the Buddha statues here. There is also a kund here, the holy dip, which is frequented. Obviously, that is far from where this happened. Indian position, which China opposes. And this is once again, this was once again an attempt by the Chinese to come and reclaim that area. A dirty design that was thwarted by our braves. But before we end the show, this is what the, Ra the Raksha Mantri said in parliament. Let's play out that. China's case, Priyaska, Hamari Serane, Dentaka Sab Samaki, I had Dutch Mode, or his or his face of me, Hatha Pai Bi, Bharti Serane, Bahadri, Pieleko, Hamari territory, me, Atraman Karne, Roka, or Unhe, Unki post per Wapas Yane Kelly, Majur Kardia, Dutch Mode, Kamare Kisi, he is Tainiki, not of Briti Hui, or no he koi Gambe Rupse, Hayalua. Jabtak Bharti Denta Party ki movie Sarkar Chalai hai. एक इंच जमीन पर भी कोई कब्जा नहीं कर सकता कल अपने सेना के जवानों ने जो 8 की देर रात को और 9 की सुबह को जो वीरता दिखाई है मैं इसकी बुरी बुरी प्रशंसा करता हूं इन्होंने घुसे हुए सभी लोगों को कुछ ही घंटों में वापस खदेड़ दिया और हमारी भूमिका रक्षण किया है